Thank you for coming. I'm going to tell you a little bit about Always, our wave pool technology based in Belgium. We're here in this uh, coastal Belgian town, uh, right in the, the suburbs. And um, the background of our company is in renewable energy and in the offshore industry. So our two founders, they're cousins, and they had this company together on uh, tidal energy. Um, but one of the two is a, is a passionate surfer and he always wanted to do the opposite. Instead of harnessing the energy from the waves, putting the energy and getting waves produced. Um, in Belgium, there's not a lot of waves, so you need to be creative. And uh, scarcity, scarcity breeds creativity, right? Um, so yeah, that's what he did. And now after Belgian waffles and beers and chocolates, we now also export Belgian waves. So our vision is to have everyone in the world, even if you live in a country with no waves, to experience surfing close to home, having your perfect wave regardless of your level, and just feel relaxed and stoked. We want, actually we want people to forget they're in a wave pool. Just be in the outdoors, forget there's any machinery. And we want to create the safest wave pools with that natural appearance. So. If you want to compare with other technologies, there's three things to rem remember. Us has a natural look and feel, so when the waves are not on, it just looks like a lake. It's world-class waves, lots of variation, completely silent, so all you hear are the waves breaking. Um, Safety-wise, it's really safe, because our tech, and I'll come back to it, is based on a submerged pillow, which moves up and down to create the waves. And since it's all open, people can just exit the water wherever they want. Um, lastly, and we're very proud of that, thanks to that background of our founders, is in energy efficiency. So very low energy cost combined with a high ROI because of the capacity of surfers makes the business model really work as a standalone business case. Natural look and feel. So here's our site, our full-scale prototype in Belgium pumping out waves in, uh, in the middle of winter. There's snow here on the edges. And, you know, you just see the lake. There's two point breaks and then there's an eight point break in here. The, the whole site here is raised a little bit because we were ground neutral, meaning we didn't want to move dirt away from the site. It's more expensive. Um, and it's a liner solution. So um, all because it's just our temporary site. So with a little bit of more of an imagination, I, I think the people here already have that vision. You can imagine palm trees, and not, it doesn't have to be a square, but just uh, a freeform shape can, uh, can really fit the site very well. And just have the beaches everywhere. And when the waves are not on, people can go for a swim and a paddle. This is what it looks like without the water. So it's a big giant mattress. With air, but actually it's water on its when it's then filled. We first inflate it with air to do the dry commissioning, to dry testing, making sure all the programmation is is tuned, and then we fill it with water, and the pillow is also with water. Here's our machine room. It uh, can be also dug underground, tucked underneath one of the beaches, so you you don't see any machinery. All you can hear is just see and and hear the waves and just the water. Um, it really works like a piano. There's actuators underneath, one every meter, so very modular. We can make it longer. This is two and a half acres, but it can be double the size. So with water, flip is a bit, is the highway. Uh, so we're a bit squeezed in there. Left point break, right point break, and then the A-frame in the center where people can split, you can either go left or right, and then paddle back through the channels, they were not shown on the previous slide. They re consider them a bit uh, also part of our IP. Um, but in this pool, we can easily fit a lot of more people because they will take a wave and paddle back and not be here, but more in the back, have the, that rest spot for catching your breath every couple of minutes and then paddle back to catch a wave. So we can have easily 64 people getting 15 waves an hour. So very unique to our tech is that we can change shape, speed, and height independently. Like most wave pool techs can't do this. Um, it's because it's so, so modular and that, that pillow can be tuned. Like 
every, once at one every meter. Um, normally, speed, height combined get you in a certain shape, but we have a very generic reef, so that guy here can have, it was the same day, just with a push of a button, different, um, different wave profile, have a very crumbly wave or a, or a very hollow wave um, on the same reef. So that's, that's pretty cool. The only thing we can do is a slow barrel, because that doesn't exist in the laws of physics, but all the rest we can, we can create. So we've done the clean, unbroken beginner waves where they don't need to do a bottom turn. They can just go straight ahead, learn, have the time to get up on their board. A beginner wave doesn't necessarily need to be small. They just need to be easy and, and not steep. So we did that. Um, maybe a short video to show how it worked. Third person is me there. And we did a couple of iterations so everyone stood up, didn't fall, and, and got their ride all the way to the front. So even in the smallest footprint here, it's a very long ride. It's even fun for me as more of an intermediate, bit working on, uh, on the footwork. And so we want beginners to have fun from the first time they sufficiently deep, they don't need to wear helmets, and they just go, go straight, straight ahead and get feet on board time. That's how you learn. Enough time to paddle, enough time to get up. Okay, so other types of waves, medium steep, larger whackable walls, more off the lip actions possible here. Air sections where the air section is not the end of the wave, but you can continue. Um, the Holy Grail, of course, which are the barrels. And this one here was a barrel on the A-frame, so in the front of the, of the pool. But we can do the barrels at the, on the side as well. And we're working on height, so we're going to have 30%, 3-0 higher waves in our next, uh, in our product roadmap. So that was all about wave variability. Safety is the second one. This is our underwater pillow, if you see. Uh, the scale, this is our colleague Sarah standing there. It's, it's quite a big um, prime mover, that is. And it's that way we can very energy efficiently transfer uh, energy from the grid to creating the waves by having such a big prime mover. Um, we're working with TÜV. TÜV is very known in water parks. They certify technology for, being, yeah, for safety, for reliability, and... They've been to the site two times. They need to come by one last time, and then we are the first safety certified technology as well, which is great for investors and insurance companies to, to have that trust. And lastly, energy efficiency. So how does it work? How does the tech work? This is a tech showcase, so I'll explain. Energy comes from the grid into our hydraulic actuators. They push and pull on the on the textile, which is um, high-performance textile, which moves the wave maker, which creates the waves. So with that background in renewable energy, we know we're 10 times more efficient than energy efficient than a pneumatic system and 25% more energy efficient than it's the best alternative out there. So we're super proud of this. And the secret behind it is that we work in resonance. We work in resonance with the whole body, most engineers want to avoid this as much as possible. It's something that's even built into the system, and the team has worked really hard, hard at that. So rather than working against the water and pushing water from A to B, which takes a lot of energy, we're working in a natural frequency. Like every, everything has is a natural frequency, that, like a glass, if you do it like that, it also starts resonating. So, so does our water bed. If we, we Hit it with a giant hand, it will also start moving. And then lesson one in wave energy is not to build vertical walls because you get a lot of reflection and turbulence and, again, loss of energy. Um, we have uh, sloping beaches with, which dissipate our energy super good. So you'll be amazed if one of you visits uh, how quickly the water just dissipates. 
So we talked about um, how does it work. Hydraulics, these are these things here. They slide in and out. They're used in the offshore industry because that's where they got their backgrounds. Our founders, they're marine grade. So here they make sure that that guy doesn't fall off the bridge. Um, so they know the cost of failure. They know the human cost of failure as well if an accident happens. It's these, t these types of partners we use to uh, power our waves. Here they use noise cancelling, um, not noise cancelling, wave cancelling, so that bridge remains still that, for that guy to do maintenance. Um, the other part is high-tech textiles. And Belgium is not known for waves, but we have a lot of these companies that make, um, make high-performance textile, make bulletproof vests, parachutes that land on, uh, on Mars. Uh, symmetrical pool, this one is the most looked at right now at the time. The, the one side, one, two, three, four, is what we've got um, at, our, at our test facility, but you can imagine opening it up like a butterfly. The wave pool sits in the center, and then you have 360 degree Beaches, 360-degree surfers in all directions. So for, from a real estate standpoint, that's really good. Um, and then you can offer a lot of variability because the pillow can start in the middle and go left and right. Or you can decide in another day or a, there's a, a pro surfer coming along. Give them one super long ride in that direction. Uh, have a play zone, on the other hand. Switch things up. So that gives a lot of versatility. Um, in that 24 example, we can have 2,000 rides. So if you're there with 128 surfers, we can have 15 waves per surfer and still not be at our maximum capacity. So we have plenty of waves and uh, very high energy efficient stuff. So that's me trying to give you a bit of a flyover of our tech. But if you're interested in learning more, hey, yeah, Craig. Uh, just want to understand the sort of maintenance challenges of yes. having everything underwater. Um, How do you deal with that? Yeah, so there are no smart parts in the water. All of them is, there are hydraulic hoses that go into the machine room, which is dry. So all of that is, can be maintained on a daily basis. We have sensors everywhere, on, on the hydraulics, on the pillow as well. So we keep track of what's happening. And what happened, it's, it's the benefit of having a full-scale prototype, is having had experience with doing maintenance, and we swapped out a hydraulic unit. And we, not me, when I, mean, I say we, in this case, um, the team. They swapped out the hydraulics diving, and we can do that outside of operating hours. You won't see an impact. We can just isolate that component and still run the, the pillow but we can isolate that particular hydraulic who is giving issues, swap it out outside of business operating hours and, and just keep on uh, yeah, uh, assuring business operations. How slippery is that surface? Oh, yeah, super slippery, Mike. Uh, I think we have footage of everyone falling by now, but it's a temporary site. So again, we're, we're conscious of our footprint, so we didn't want, and of our cash, and so we didn't want to pour concrete for just our, our R&D facility. And follow up question, if you ever heat one of these pools, would that affect that material you're using for the pillow? Heat, heat that pool? Yeah. Uh, no, not at all, because these are all super high-tech uh, equipment. And heating, I uh, just, maybe from a sustainability point of view, not uh, do it. But uh, also, all the machinery equipment is sufficiently deep, so if it, if it does freeze over, it does not affect the machinery. So I need to stop, but ask me all your questions later on so Luke can have a whole session uh, uninterrupted. Thank you.